Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. Uh, we are continuing our uh, match between, well not continuing, starting our match uh, between Paul Charles Morphy and Henry Edward Bird. As we mentioned uh, in the previous video of the Morphy saga, Henry Bird uh, arrived uh, into town and uh, will now take on Paul Morphy. And I know what you guys are thinking, how many Staunton's minions must Morphy defeat before he actually faces the final boss? Uh, well, imagine how Morphy felt. Uh, you know, you're enjoying this match from the comfort of your own home and Morphy had to travel all all the way to England uh, to face them and uh, well of course uh, uh, Staunton in the end and here I will just uh, read you a very very short part from uh, from from the book on Morphe I uh, can't remember who the author is uh, uh, due to the anesthesia but I, I will put it uh, in the description below uh, so while Morphy awaited a reply to his letter of August 14th, Henry uh, Edward Bird, one of England's strongest players, returned to London. And the result of his encounter with Morphy was most dramatic. So this is what he says in the book. And uh, we're not going to spoil anything by telling you what the result was, why the match was dramatic, but it was. And also something that, uh, you know, very interesting uh, about Henry Bird uh, on, on uh, his uh, Wikipedia page. It says, although Bird was a practicing accountant, not a professional chess player it has been said that he lived for chess and would play anybody anywhere anytime under any conditions and at the time uh, this game was played he was not uh, as old as in the photo here he was actually 29 uh, years of age so uh, that being said uh, let's check out the game and this is the first game of their match or it, it might not be the first one because we don't have all the games uh, from their match uh, uh, on record on only a, a few of them but we'll get back to that so Morphe has the white pieces in this game and he opens with e4 sorry about that uh, and uh, for those of you who are wondering why my hair is you know going places uh, uh, well the place where I usually cut my hair has been closed because of you know the thing that shall not be named on YouTube so I had to find another one and you know I did find it but it will only happen tomorrow so e4 and bird replies with e5 and morphe of course goes ahead uh, and uh, launches the f pawn so the king's gambit is on the board and uh, with the white pieces he wants to uh, see what what bird can do so here we have bishop to c5 bird declines the king's gambit and he goes for rapid development with bishop to c5 which is fine uh, we have knight to f3 and d6 now. We have c3 by Morphe, uh, saying that, okay, even if you capture it now, I have a massive center here uh, after d4. And even if you don't capture, I'm still going to play d4 uh, at some point. So here, bishop to g4, uh, pinning, the, pinning the knight. So now uh, the knight is not really... Uh, engaged in any uh, you know struggle for the central squares and here bishop to c4 and already morphe has a very nice threat for example if you're not careful for example if you go for something like knight to f6 you immediately go uh, f captures on e5 and black will not be able to capture black will have to give up the light square bishop uh, because if you capture then it's the very simple trick bishop captures on f7 captures and knight captures on e5 with check with a double attack on the bishop on g4 you'd have to move the king and then just knight picks up the bishop and the white is white is practically winning if no funny business occurs so here after bishop to c4 we have knight to c6 this prevents the idea that we've just shown because the e5 pawn is defended twice by the pawn and by the knight here so here uh, we have b4 the so-called uh, almost delayed king Evans gambit uh, but both of them are <laughs> uh, are declined. Uh, it's not actually called that. I just call it that, uh, you know, when the F and B pawn are played. If you guys want, you can also call it that, you know, it's totally cool. So here, bishop back to B6 and now A4. Preparing A5 to trap the bishop. So, of course, A6, bird uh, makes some room for the bishop. And now H3 by Morphe. And here we have already a very exciting moment. Uh, something that happens when black does not accept the gambit. White really extends with the pawns and it's not a problem uh, but here you have to decide whether you want to capture the knight or you want to go back with the bishop so it's an it's an open game it can very easily open up so maybe uh, maybe uh, keeping the bishop pair makes sense however uh, bird goes for bishop captures on f3 he has a different idea queen captures morphe brings the queen into the game still unable to castle as the bishop slices through this diagonal and now knight to f6 bird is now also ready to castle 
We have d3 by Morphe, now preparing to bring the bishop into the game. The knight can also join the game, maybe maybe go to e3, maybe to g3, all depends on what black plays. And the queen to e7 now. Bert says, I might castle kingside, but I also might castle queenside. Although it's uh, a, a bit less likely that I'm going to castle queenside with all of these pawns here. So here we have f5. Uh, Morphe now closes the... Uh, the, uh, the structure and it's not going to be easy to make a breakthrough if anyone's going to be making a breakthrough probably going to be black with the, with d5 uh, and here uh, while you could castle here uh, it's uh well it's a bit dangerous uh, bishop to g5 is coming and it's just going to be very unpleasant after bishop g5 you can bring the knight into the game for example to h5 with a double attack on the knight and it doesn't seem like black can do all that much here so here bird instead goes rook to d8 and now comes bishop to g5 but now it's a little bit different as uh the the, the king still hasn't castled or uh, you know the black king might not castle at all and knight back to b8 this allows knight to d7 to add another defender to the knight and also you are preparing a central breakthrough with c6 and d5 uh, we have knight to d2, Morphe continues to develop, uh, and c6 now by bird. We have knight to f1, and now comes d5. So here, uh, well, uh, there are a couple of ways you could treat this position. For example, uh, a5 is always welcome, knight bd7 always welcome. Uh, bird wastes no time, and he strikes in the center with d5. And uh, it's a very interesting idea, because uh, you can actually capture on d5. For example, e captures on d5, you run into e4, and it looks very... Uh, very scary. Uh, I don't think Morphe had any trouble calculating this out, but as you know, Morphe was lazy in calculating when there was no need to do that. Something that uh, he shares with, uh, for example, Ho Jose Rol Capablanca. Uh, but uh, here we, we could see a trade. For example, uh, if Queen captures on e4, uh, very interesting because the, the knight is pinned. Knight captures, bishop captures, and now bishop to f2 with check. Tricking white a little bit, but not all that much. King e2, knight captures on c3 with check, captures, and now you can capture on e7. And we end this uh, variation with white being up a pawn. It's not much, but uh, all in all, white should be better. Uh, so instead uh, of going uh, for something like this, Morphe goes bishop back to b3. He wants to keep uh, everything on the board. And now comes queen to d6. Here, again, uh, a lot of moves are possible. The instant d4 is possible, a5 is always an idea because you, you really want to put pressure on that uh, overextended the queen side pawn majority. Uh, but okay, queen to d6, and now comes knight to g3 by Morphe. And again, uh, a lot of very interesting options for bird again a5 always an idea putting pressure here just developing knight bd7 adding more uh, uh, well more just more defense to this knight on f6 so these are all possibilities however uh, bird castles here and uh, it could be a little bit dangerous because morphe immediately goes knight to h5 and now what's uh, what's morphe's idea here uh, well, his idea is that, of course, if the knight is captured, then uh, Morphe will grab the rook on d8. But this is exactly what uh, what can be played, because after captures, captures, and captures, yes, the queen recaptures, but now d4 is incredibly strong for black, and it's not going to be uh, all that easy for white to mount the attack. The f7 pawn is nicely covered, and white has to figure out some way of bringing the rooks into the game. You can, of course, charge with g4, g5, but black is also very, very quick in the... Uh, in, in the attack and the knight can easily come and help out with, with the defense so uh, it it is possible however uh, after this uh, sorry about so many howevers <laughs> uh, after knight to h5 uh, bird first played d captures on e4 he threw in a, a nice tvishensug uh, but uh, this doesn't actually help him because after d captures on e4 by morphe he played knight captures on h5 now but now it doesn't uh, work all that great, uh, but you're going to tell me why it doesn't work. So feel free to pause the video here and uh, find the best move for Morphe while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations on not grabbing the knight right away. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's uh, rook to d1. Rook to d1 is the move because if you go for the uh, knight right away, then queen to d3 is really uh, a nuisance uh, because you're threatening e4, you're threatening c3. Uh, you don't allow this capture because then you lose control of the d2 square. For example, if bishop captures, rook captures, there's just no, no defending this. If queen f3 defending, just queen d2 check. King f1 and now rook to d3 and it's all over.
uh, the, the queen doesn't really have anywhere to go. You have to guard the f2 square because of checkmate. And if you block, for example, with this, then it's just queen f4 check. The king has nowhere to go. King e1 and rook e3 just wins on the spot. Uh, and uh, another thing after, if you capture on h5, queen to d3, you could go queen f3, seems like you're defending everything, uh, but then it's just rook to d7 and uh, the game continues. So it is possible to capture the knight, although you don't really gain anything uh, w with proper play. So here Morphy played rook to d1 and now it means problems for uh, for bird because after the queen moves uh, the rook will be attacked twice and this is a this is a problem Morphy will win material here we have queen to c7 and now bishop captures on d8 we have rook captures rook captures and queen captures and it doesn't seem like it's all that big of a deal of course uh, captures on h5 uh, but it is it is a lot. Uh, Morphe's king is still in the center of the board, still unable to castle. So this is what Bird is hoping that will allow him to to achieve something. But he still has to figure out a way of bringing the queen into the game and also how to bring the uh, knight into the game. So here we have bishop to e3, uh, preparing this uh, very sneaky checkmate. Queen d2 check followed by queen to f2 checkmate. And now while well, Morphe could capture on f7, not not with the queen, the queen will be needed uh, to guard the checkmate, uh, instead he just goes back. Again, probably lazy to calculate stuff, he just goes back, says I'm up material, uh, if you want we can trade queens. So of course uh, Bird doesn't want to trade queens and he goes queen to h4 check. And it's very interesting how Morphe allows this uh, king walk, uh, but it's not all that difficult to calculate. King e2, of course only playable move that allows white to keep the advantage. And now uh, even queen f2 check king d3 doesn't do anything for black because there's no way of continuing the attack. The queen cannot deliver any checks, the bishop can't deliver checks. If knight d7, uh, these squares are covered so the knight cannot join the attack. So here instead after king to e2 we have bishop back to b6. Now clear, clearing some squares here for the queen. Uh, but Morphe just continues the, the, the king march, king to d2. And now... Uh, Bird brings the knight into the game, knight to d7, but now queen g4. Morphy says, all right, uh, we either trade now or you have to play a passive move. Uh, and of course, if you trade, Morphy is just up material, so he's going to beat you. So queen to f2 was played, now hoping for some uh, checking opportunities. However, uh, the game is now completely lost for black. Feel free to pause the video and win the game for Morphy uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, especially if you also got the first one correct. Uh, it is f6 for those of you who just want to enjoy the show. And uh, it's such a strong move because it threatens checkmate and also threatens the knight here. And there's nothing uh, you can do here. Like you could try checking uh, queen to e3 check, but after king to c2, it doesn't work. You can do one more check, uh, <laughs> queen to uh, f2 with check, but then king b1 and there's just no no continuing this you could capture the pawn with the queen but you give up the knight uh, but it's something you could have done right away you didn't have to go for all of these checks so after f6 you could also capture with the queen and then give up the knight and now you're just down a whole rook it doesn't really make sense to continue this so what you could do after this f6 move to prevent checkmate is capture with the knight but this doesn't actually prevent checkmate you know it only prolongs the game uh, for three more moves because after queen to c8 check it's game over you have to give up the two remaining pieces uh, or you know I'm just doing this for fun you could also just give up one and get checkmated uh, but it, it would end in checkmate either way so after this uh, f6 move uh, Morphe wins the game and uh, what a victory for Morphe especially I, I really enjoyed that Morphe won the game with f6 being the finishing move as he has that you know uh, uh, you know, uh, thorn in his eye when, when Mr. Barnes played f6 and that did not go well for Morphe. Uh, but yeah, this is the first game we're showing from the match uh, Paul Charles Morphe versus Henry Edward Bird. Uh, I, I do hope you guys enjoyed it and the other games will also be very enjoyable. Now, I still don't know if the all of the games that were played were lost or maybe they just decided to save these ones as these are uh, the, the more enjoyable ones, uh, but if I, uh, you know, discover any clues about this while I'm reading the book, uh, I will also share this with you. 
So uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Bjorn Brenna, uh, Harry Berglund, uh, Ralph Wade, Thomas Connors, and Johan Clayson for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will uh, see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the uh, of the good stuff, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.